Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Tom. Some of you might know me as Bull of Salmon on Instagram. A while ago I received a watch that took me by surprise. Meet the modern reissue of one of the original Dirty Dozen watches, the Vertex M100A. Before we go over the watch, let's do a quick dive into the brand history. Vertex is a British based brand with a very rich history dating back all the way to 1918. During World War II, Vertex, like many other British watchmakers, was called upon to produce watches for the military. The company produced a number of different models for the British Armed Forces, including one of the famous Dirty Dozen watches. The Dirty Dozen is a term used to refer to a group of 12 watches from 12 brands that were produced for the British military during World War II. These watches were designed to meet specific criteria. They had to have a black dial with Arabic numerals, small seconds at 6 o'clock with a railroad minute track, a luminous hour hand and minute hand, and luminous indices, shatterproof plexiglass and shock resistant case, they had to be waterproof and they had to have an easy grip crown for use with gloves. Among big brands like Omega, Longines, IWC, JLC, Vertex supplied about 15,000 watches. And today these dirty dozen watches are highly sought after by collectors due to their history and rarity. If you are wondering about the broad arrow on those dials, the broad arrow symbol is a marking that has been used by the British military since the 16th century. It is a symbol of ownership and is used to indicate that an item is the property of the British government or military. So what happened to the brand? Well, the brand disappeared in the 70s, but it was relaunched in 2015 by the great-grandson of the original founder. In 2016, the manual wind M100, based on the caliber 59 from World War II, was introduced. And this year, the M100 got a follow-up release, the M100A, with the A as an indicator that this one has an automatic movement. Before you mention it, the M100A isn't a fateful replica, it never tried to be. It's based on the caliber 59, but is built to modern standards. The watch has a 40mm case, a thickness of 12.5mm, a lug to lug of what I measured to be 48-49mm, and it takes 20mm straps. The 40mm case is the biggest departure from the original, and I found the watch to be wearing very comfortable, and that's the most important thing. The watch is powered by an automatic Celita SW260-1. It has a power reserve of 38 hours and is regulated to plus minus 5 seconds a day. The case is made from brushed 316L steel. The case height is thin enough to enjoy the watch on a double pass NATO and to me a NATO is a must on this watch. But no worries, there are plenty more options, I'll cover those later in the video. There is a screw down crown that provides water resistance up to 100 meters. The crown has a nice size with plenty of grip, but perhaps an extra detail I would have liked to have seen was a signed crown, but I guess it blends in perfectly with the no-nonsense design and finishing of the rest of the case. The crown and movement operation feels very pleasant. When setting the time or winding the watch, you get a good resistance, so you get a good feel of what you are doing. To me, that sense of feedback is an indicator of what a premium watch should feel like. There is no way to get around those insane 3D numerals made out of X1 grade molded super luminova. There is no faux patina, these numerals are crisp, raised, sharp 3D blocks that have this fluo marker feel to them. This is the craziest of loom I've seen so far. Even going out on an overcast day and coming back inside, they will light up like a Christmas tree. I took this watch on a field trip a while ago and my wife asked if I could cover up the watch at night because it was lighting up the interior of the van. All I'm trying to say is that if you're still in active service, wear long sleeves because wearing this watch might give away your position to the enemy and the enemy would be able to tell the time from a mile away. Now what stood out to me most when I first unboxed the watch is how legible the dial is. Not because of the loom per se, but because how good that sapphire and coating is. You can build the best looking dial in the world, having legible hands and markers, but if the coating is crap, it doesn't mean a thing. The M100 has a crystal box, top sapphire crystal, with anti-reflective coating applied, and it's amazing. Really, for me, this is the reason I like this watch so much. No matter where or how you look at it, you always get a clearer view of the dial. 
For the hands, we have a pencil style hour and minute hand, and that minute hand runs all the way to the railroad track minute scale running around the dial. Faithful to the original, the sizable sub seconds dial swallows the numeral 6 and also bites a chunk out of the 5 and 7 numerals. Above the center of the dial, we find the broad arrow symbol, the brand name, and all the way at 12, we find two red dots that have a nice aesthetic effect. If I'm being picky, the flat surface of the sub second hand makes it disappear in certain light. Now, this got me thinking why didn't they issue the Dirty Dozen watches with the normal running seconds? The answer is pretty simple. This was done so the soldiers wouldn't confuse the seconds for the minutes. When you order the M100, it comes in a really cool bomb-proof Pelican case. A black leather strap and a grey seatbelt style NATO is supplied by default. A stainless steel bracelet or a rubber strap and a bunch of other NATOs are available via the website too. There are no drilled lug holes on the case, but all the straps and the bracelets have a quick release spring bar mechanism. So you can easily swap straps yourself. The rubber is my second favorite option after the NATO strap. It feels a bit heavier, but was surprisingly smooth and bendy making it super comfortable on the wrist. It has some cool details, like the broad arrow logo on the outside, and it features a nice pattern underneath that helps to drain sweat and prevents the watch from sliding around. If you are a bracelet guy, there is a 3-link steel bracelet available, and it has a couple of party tricks hidden up its clasp. The logo on the clasp features a loom. Totally not necessary, but just super cool. And there's more. The clasp features an on-the-fly extension system that is even possible to operate when the watch is on the wrist. Personally, the full metal experience makes it a bit of a heavier combination for me, but let's admit it, I don't have the manliest of man wrists either. I hate questioning or defending price points, but it's usually one of the first things that people say in the comments. I think everybody should determine what they feel comfortable with spending their money on. There are cheap options, there are expensive options, there is cheap and there is quality. This is a smaller UK based brand that is not mass producing and having the label Swiss made on the dial comes at a production and assembly cost. It might look like a simple design but this is one of those no corners were cut kind of watch. We have a super solid case and case back construction, an amazing loom application and I'll say it again, the best anti-reflective coating I've seen on a watch. This should be standard on all watches. So, how did I get along with the watch after a couple of weeks with it on the wrist? Well, it managed to make my other watches take a back seat in the watch box. It took me by surprise. From the first minute I had it on the wrist, this felt like my kind of watch. But in the weeks after, I kept grabbing for this one too. The sturdy feeling, the no-nonsense look, the legibility, not to mention how good it looks on photo and how easy it is to take pictures of. I've come to realize that 40mm is my personal sweet spot too. I know a lot of you want to see a smaller version of this one. Vertex is the kind of brand that listens to their customers. So if you want to see a smaller version, make some noise in the comments. Well, that's all for today. Or maybe there's one more thing. Hi, I'm Tom. Some of you might know me as Bowl of Salmon on Instagram. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Bye. All right. Okay. Hi. My name is Thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, if you want to help support the channel and my content, uh, you would do me a big favor of hitting those like buttons and subscribe buttons. I don't know where they are. Here, there, everywhere. <laughs> I need to keep checking the screen. I'm not used to this. So um, thank you very much. See you in the next one. Bye.